the time has finally come for our last step in the mouse uh, making project, in your plushie making project. Um, so for our last steps, it is time for us to actually make our plushie a three-dimensional object with a front and a back that is all connected to itself. So you're going to need some straight pins for this, um, and I'm going to start by lining up the edges of my plushie. And I want to make sure that all the edges are sitting where they're supposed to. And I'm going to put pins all the way around. I'm going to really be careful to um, match up things like ears, especially on the rabbit. Um, ears are going to be something you really got to watch for because uh, those are a large protruding piece. The nice thing about fleece is that it's really forgiving, so you can kind of pull it to where it needs to be and it will it will cooperate for the most part. And once you've got it all pinned, um, I'm going to have you leave the bottom of your plushie unpinned because we've got to have some place to stuff from, to fill it with our with our polyfill. So you're going to need this, the, the batting, the stuffing for this step too. Um, but I've got, I've got pins all the way around. I'm happy with how things are sitting. Um, so now it's time for me to start sewing. So I've got a needle threaded with three strands of embroidery floss, and I need to tie a knot in it because that obviously hasn't happened yet <laughs> from the way I just pulled it right out of my own hand. Um, and I'm going to get ready, and we're going to do a whip stitch around the edge of this. Um, so the whip stitch is the same one I did on the tail. It's that one we use for name tags. It is the one where we try to keep things at a 90 degree angle. It's all of those. It's a stitch of many qualities. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to start on the right side of the opening, um, and I'm actually going to insert my needle between the layers so that I don't have a knot sticking on the outside of my plushie. Um, so instead, the knotted type will be sandwiched in the middle there. But so now, from here on out, I'm going to be working around the edge of my whole plushie. So I'm going to stick my needle from the back through to the front through both layers and pull it through. And then move on forward and just keep doing that same thing all the way around. So it's a little bit of a different version of the whip stitch than we did in our last uh, time of using it on the tail. Because it is now around two edges of fabric instead of being applied flat. Uh, but the principle is the exact same. It's still the same stitch. And we're just going to keep following all the way around. I'm going to make sure... I'm probably going to show you the whole thing. I'm not going to pause the video this time. Um, but especially pay attention when I get to the ears. Because going around those shapes, the protruding shapes of ears and things, um, can be a little complicated. N not much more complicated than anything else we've done. But worth watching the video of. I'm using a contrasting thread on this so that we can see my stitches really nicely. Because I think they're... It gives it a fun homemade quality about it. it. It looks like my stylish little handmade companion. Oop. Okay, and so now that I've reached this corner, I'm just going to pivot and keep working all the way around the ear. I'm very excited for you all to reach this step um, in class, or I mean any of the steps in this project. I'm excited to see how these turn out, how everybody feels about having a cool, fun friend companion for class from now on, um, what you will name them. Again, I'm not going to forget that. I need to know what the names are, why, what are, what are you naming them, what is the point. Even if the point is I used a random name generator and this one made me laugh, I absolutely. I just gotta know. It's the little things that keep a grad student going, you know? Like having students name their plushies. And if at any point you do a stitch that you're like, hmm, I didn't like that one. What you can do is you can pull your needle off the thread 
and you can reach in with your fingers or with a pin to get underneath the thread. And you can very easily just pull it right back out. Because I was, I was like, eh, that wasn't my favorite stitch. I can pull this one out and I can re-thread my needle and keep on sewing. So I wanted to show you guys how to, how to easily undo it. That is an option whenever you are sewing with a knot tied in just one end of your thread. If I had both of my thread ends tied together, that would not be an option. So that's one of the advantages of sewing with just a knot in one end of your thread, which is what we've done all through this project. I'm trying to make sure everything is evenly spaced as possible. Um, and I'm making sure I'm definitely getting through both layers all the time. When I get to the corner areas, I'm trying to really put a stitch like right in that corner um, to reinforce things a little bit to keep stuffing from escaping there. Oop, there we go. And I'm removing my pins as I go. As they become no longer necessary, I pull them out. Okay, and now that I've reached the bottom, I'm not going to tie off my thread. I'm not going to pull any knots out or anything. I'm not, I'm not going to make any knots. Um, but it's time to fill our plushie with stuffing. So you'll want to grab the polyfill stuffing that you should have on hand. And right now I've got way more than I need. Because if I put all this in there, I think he would be a very chubby plushie, um, which makes it hard to finish stuffing or finish showing him. So right now I'm just going to take my needle and the thread I was sewing and just kind of set it to the side. I'm going to pull out that last pin um, and I'm going to get a small piece of stuffing and I'm going to insert it into my plushie from the bottom and I'm going to try to work it up into the body with my fingers and then I also would recommend using the end of a marker or pencil or even a chopstick. Um, I've heard chopsticks are really great for this. Unfortunately this classroom does not come stocked with chopsticks so Surprising, surprising everybody, we don't have chopsticks on hand at the Kent State University sewing classroom. Um, but I'm using this marker to try to push the stuffing into the ear. Um, in the rabbit especially, that's going to be really important because you don't want your ears to be sad and limp. You want them to have stuffing, but it's really hard to get your fingers up in there that far. So I'm using, I'm using a marker, I'm kind of pushing it up, and as you can see, this one has some fluff in it, this one is still flat. Um, I'm going to pull a little more and try to get it up in there into that ear. And actually I can do this with my fingers pretty well. Hmm. That's one bonus of scaling this up is it is a lot easier to stuff than a teeny tiny one. So now I've got the ears stuffed to my liking, um, maybe just a little more in this one. And then I'm gonna finish stuffing the body. So you'll wanna kind of work from the top down when it comes to stuffing because if you get this part stuffed and it's just perfect and you've still got an empty head up here, you're going to have to push all of that stuffing out of the way to finish getting the head full because unfortunately that is how space works. Okay, so this is about how full I want mine. He's got a nice a nice roundness to him, but he's not bulging too hard. Um, he's not unevenly stuffed. He's pretty, he's pretty straight across, pretty even. 
So now that I've got it all full of stuffing, I'm going to insert just a little bit more right at the bottom here because that was a little empty. And then I'm going to um, pinch with my fingers so it's nice and flat and insert another pin to hold everything in place while I finish sewing. So I've got, I've got the stuffing in there and so now we can close it up by finishing our whip stitch the rest of the way around. Except for I've lost my needle, so. There we go. Okie dokie. So I'm going to finish my whip stitch just as I was doing before. Around this last little bit. Um, and right now I just can't seem to keep my needle in my hand and threaded. There we go. Okay. <laughs> and you'll notice it's a little bit trickier now that it's stuffed, but if you've got this pin holding things uh, flat and away from your needle, it'll be a lot easier. Here we go. And now I've reached where I started again. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this pin, kind of massage it so that it's got its whole body full of stuffing, um, and I'm going to tie it off. And I'm going to tie it off by looping through that existing thread and trying to make a small, neat knot here. Since this one is going to be our one visible knot, I want to make sure it looks really good and it's not super obvious. Um, and once I have gotten that tied to my satisfaction, which I've got it now, I'm going to clip off my mouse's <laughs> thread tail. And it is now finished. So this is what your finished plushy project could look like if you made a mouse. Um, it should look finished like this, no matter what animal you make. If you've got any uh, polyfill strings sticking out, you can go ahead and pull those out um, to give yourself a nice, clean, finished plushy. Whoop! But that is the end of making a handsome plushie project. I hereby dub the Master Splinter from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, and I cannot wait to see what your finished plushies look like. Thank you for watching and following along, and I hope that they turn out as good as you imagine.